Yeah. And this is another kind of note is that like kind of the whole concept of our graphics IP is also like sort of wildly disaggregated. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we we have some visuals and like Robert can elaborate on this too, but um, like it's kind of strewn across all the different tiles. Right. And again, that's with a mind towards taking advantage of Foveros, taking advantage of this architecture and also like driving greater efficiency overall for these key use cases. Very cool. Should we, should we talk graphics since Ryan's here? <laughs> Mark? Um, I, I did have some questions about ARC because there were some um, uh, impressive performance claims made. Um, ARC, uh, in this implementation, the, the ARC uh, GPU uh, reportedly 2x the performance of your uh, current generation integrated solution. Um, maybe expand on that a little bit. And um, there was also a claim that, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, that you guys are going to be some of the best, if not the best, uh, most potent integrated graphics solution on the market when, when this thing hits in December. Is that a fair? Did I, did I get that right or was I, was I dreaming? <laughs> I believe that to be true, yes, based on the numbers that I'm seeing, uh, which I know is a wild claim, but I'm pretty confident in it. All right. So there you go. Confirmed. Um, so, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about <clears throat> about what makes uh, ARC in, in this SOC special and how you got to that performance level, because um, that is a bold claim. Um, you know, AMD, let's 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 be honest. AMD has a very strong IGP, as you know, IGP uh, track record uh, as of late. And um, yeah, yeah, just some additional color around that would be great. So all apologies to uh, Mr. Shroud and the graphics team. I'm going to take up the graphics mantle for just a second here. Um, (laughs) You know, like Arc is so obviously incredibly good at performance per watt. It's it's been demonstrated time and time again. And where that that really pays dividends is when you start integrating into an SOC. And as we know from, uh, for example, the uh, Vega story on my previous employer's side, uh, performance per watt is very instructive uh, when you start going into the 15, 28, 35 watt power envelopes that typical notebook CPUs play. Um, and, and so bringing a very modern arc based graphics core into, into the device uh, simply allows us to scale frequencies higher, Uh, go wider on the device, get more out of every shader engine than previously, and net-net, you get this massive, massive bump in delivered graphics performance. Um, The disaggregation helps a bit too. Dan touched on this, like bringing the media engine out of the graphics tile into the SOC tile uh, frees up kind of more area in the graphics-specific components. Uh, And, you know, that's a... Uh, a source of power usage that is now divorced from from the graphics engine. It sits somewhere else, uh, has a different uh, voltage supply. So like, you know, there's even minor stuff like that, like cutting the actual graphics core or graphics tile up into pieces and spreading it across the chip pays dividends as well in terms of performance per watt. So it's not just the architecture, it's also the construction that contributes as well. So you you disaggregated Ryan's chip too. Yes, we did. <laughs> There's actually a, a, like a perfect time to answer a question that came in the chat. Um, so KW is ask, asking, is there a tiny Intel GPU in the SOC tile when the GPU is shut off? Now, I think the answer is no, because the display engine is in the SOC. The question that I sort of have is, is there a means where, let's say, you know, the display is lit up, but the GPU is idle. Can can the GPU shut off while you still have an uh, image displayed on screen? Yes, that is possible. Uh, it's a technology called panel self-refresh or PSR. And uh, in in certain cases, yes, you can uh, fully gate the graphics island and, and just run the panel uh, by itself. And it usually involves a timing controller or TCON in the display that has some amount of a memory of its own to hold and self-refresh the image. Uh, but certainly that's a, a really key way that um, modern innovative power management schemes are uh, showing up in laptops, but may not always be obvious to the user. 
Got it. And Very that, cool. That actually, and you guys have gone a step go beyond that too with the kind of bursty code thing here, where when you have video playback, um, I think Tom said you're decoding 16 frames at a time all up front and then pacing those out to display as they need to show up. So while it's going through that cycle of just doling out those frames, you have way less power usage in general with that as well. That's right. Well, uh, you know, is it any surprise that Tom's talking about frame pacing? <laughs> <laughs> Not but it's bit. true. No, it's, it's true. It's a great technology. Uh, there was all sorts of panel and video related stuff. Um, you know, there was a demo at Innovation where uh, there was variable refresh rate with no OS involvement at all or no driver involvement at all, which seems interesting. Uh, but is now possible with modern TCONs and and the implementations we brought into Meteor Lake to talk to those kinds of displays. Let's let's talk about that because I actually have and I have to we have to post a, a video demo of that that I shot, um, and uh, I believe it was demoed on a Sharp display, Sharp laptop right. display. Uh, Mike Bartz was there, by the way. It's good to see Mike again, um, and he was running that booth. Um, and so, yeah, there was there were there were there were two technologies involved, uh, both of which uh, maybe three actually um, that uh, impact or help significantly with battery life. There was uh, what you just spoke of, and and I'm forgetting the acronym for that again. Um, um, and then there was another technology that was similar to the way an OLED display shuts off pixels in. Uh, you know, completely black regions, uh, you know, of, of an image um, uh, for really for contrast. But in this case, you were powering down pixels or using the TCON to power down pixels. Again, this was, uh, you know, separate of the OS in in regions for, um, you know, for, for power savings. And then and then I also saw another um uh, it wasn't panel self refresh. It was limiting the ref the um, maybe maybe it's the same technology, and I'm just conflating it. Uh, it was limiting the um, frame rate when not necessary. So let's say you had a 120 hertz panel um, when you're watching a you know streaming Netflix and you're looking at you know you know probably 30p or 60p at most, uh, and there's no cursor movement. It, it limits the, the refresh rate down to, to that speed, automatically saving you power as well. That's how I kind of remember it, but it, maybe maybe talk a little bit about that because I, th I thought in conjunction with Meteor Lake technology, that's going to make for a very power efficient laptop. Yeah, uh, you, you kind of nailed it. You, you got the summary of those, those technologies perfectly. Um, essentially what it allows the device to do is get the panel to one one ish watts of power consumption sometimes less <laughs> and uh you know the panel is such a massive contributor to overall battery life or reduced battery life depending on what technology it uses and who builds it mm. and and so aggressively managing the power of the panel and building in uh, display engine capabilities to talk to those new technologies is such a fundamental part of platform power management, not not necessarily core power management. And um, you know, platform is actually the biggest contributor these days to the overall battery life. And and so it's it's not enough anymore to just have a, an efficient core or an efficient GPU or whatever you need. Uh, really strong media engines, display engines, display output capabilities to manage and interface with these very active components outside of your own CPU. It's like there are there are, there are no dumb panels anymore, right? It's you're managing backlight brightness by region. You're managing refresh rate by content type on the screen. Uh, you can let the screen go to sleep without putting the computer to sleep, like a smartphone can. Um, and actually the smartphone is a, a good example, right? I'm, I'm actually on a pixel six pro right now, and it has adaptive refresh rate, uh, depending on whether or not I'm touching the screen and it's the same model for interactivity or content based instead on the laptop. Impressive. Actually, your video and audio is pretty darn good, Robert, for, for phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm happy with it. Like it's a great device. Very cool. Uh, what were the acronyms again that I was missing there? 
Oh That's gosh, I, <laughs> okay. I can't remember. Dan, do you remember? I, I, yeah, I don't remember. I, I, I would just maybe make like kind of a, a higher point. And I think like certainly uh, Ryan and, and Tom on the team, right? They can they can do a real nice job like unpacking the full richness of the feature set. Um, but like you know, you, you heard like we're we're kind of excited about the perf per watt improvements of the of the IP in the process and how that will you know ultimately deliver performance. So like that that will be the headline likely. Um, but, uh, but the feature set's also great, right? It's a, it's a really modern, complete, uh, graphics feature set, both 3d and 2d. Um, mm -hmm. we can, you know, we have all those details and be happy to share more on that too. Um, but, um, but you're getting, uh, you know, even like you get XCSS, you get even like ray tracing, like you get the full arc feature set now in this, in this integrated, uh, form factor. Um, so like yeah. the, the features are, are probably as notable, if not more even than, and then of course, like the, the big improvement in performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually we should, and we're getting close to wrapping up here, but, um, uh, we could talk forever, by the way, this is, this is quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, let's talk about arc, arc performance in this, uh, you know, one more time. Are we, are we talking about, you know, sort of put it if we can without, um, disclosing too much or putting you guys on the hot seat. Can we talk about like what sort of gaming experience we can expect on a, machine with integrated art graphics obviously integrated graphics in years gone by have not been uh really able to deliver you know a high-end gaming well they certainly the high-end gaming experience but we always wanted more right we you always seem to want more from the integrated graphics in terms of gaming um uh, where are we at now is it 1080p medium image quality or uh, can can you kind of put a put a dot at it or a dart on it somehow <laughs> dave i i think you're in the ballpark it, it's going to be comparable to entry-level gaming discrete which as we know a lot of people rely on and works really well for damn near everything okay and i'm not i'm not going to go say like it's a gaming notebook it's not right i want to be clear about that but the you know people want to be able to play a game on the soc and not suffer uh, crappy frame rates or uh, missing feature sets and stuff. And Arc absolutely delivers. It's really, really solid. Uh, 